fella. My man, how we doing? Things are good. You got the uh, Eddie Vedder look going today with uh, with the button up and the nice t-shirt underneath. And Buck, you got the hair just waving. Thank you. Is that a new product or what's going on with that? Uh, it was a high and tight cut, knowing that. You went with the O'Brien? A couple of big weekends coming up. So, um, <laughs> you know, figured uh, I'd been letting it go lately. And I thought to uh, go see my girl Chanel. I missed my last appointment with her. Is that Chanel Chanel? Yeah. Oh, wow. How's she Chanel doing? Nelson. Chanel. Named her kid Brock Nelson. Thought that was cool. Yeah. He plays for the Outers. Yeah. Connolly's first pick. That's who Connolly uh, yeah. got to shout out at the draft. I know. Yeah, so she's good. She's good. Does a great haircut. She uh, actually colors Christina's hair too. It's a family uh, affair. Yeah, it sure is. Although, it takes a little bit longer to do Christina's hair than mine. <laughs> takes even less to do mine than it does yours. So it takes takes my yeah, girl. What's your take? Yeah. What? Ashley, yeah. how long to actually cut my hair? Seven and a half minutes. Seven and a half minutes. Yeah. Seven and a half minutes. How often are you going? Every other... Four days? Listen, bro. I go... Uh, Where do you pay her for seven I, and a half minutes? Well, I give her a nice tip. I think she cost me... I think it's a $55 hair cup. I throw her, I throw her 20 because she wears the nice yoga pants for me, you know? Yeah. Um, wow, great little seven stu- and a half minutes. Seven and a half minutes. You can finish that quick. <laughs> yeah. I, that's I used to be able to finish even quicker than that. But uh, yeah, it doesn't take her long. The shampoo. Huh. Are you counting the shampoo or just when her... Actually, in, yeah, the whole experience. Yeah, like... Oh, I've know. been there for probably, let's call it... 20, 20 and change. Wow. How many dudes does she do in a day at that fa- that speed? Probably a lot. I mean, my hair is not the thickest hair going. It's a lot of dudes. It probably takes her longer to cut Jamie Held's hair than mine. Held's goes in there. Gets does he? Cut. She's got a great setup. A little little back unit in CDM. The studio slash apartment is all hers. Tunes. Good AC. They're uh, the pants. Ah, you know, Ash. Right she, behind Seduce there. Yeah, she Somewhere. came to the... The CDM Christmas walk one year with us, so you know who she is, but it doesn't take her very long to do the old high and tight for me. So I'd say, you know, I like to go in for what you call the boutique men's haircut. Yeah. Mine's probably 30 minutes in the chair. A lot of texting. It's my time. I fucking know that. A lot of texting. A lot of, you don't you know, need to be in a chair to be a lot of texting. On Twitter, we like to go back and forth on some shit that we read. It's called X. Huh? It's called X. Yeah, it's true, X. And um, so, you know, create some fun topics to talk, uh, talk about. Is it still in Lido? Is she still down in Lido? No, she's uh, she's right uh, right across the street from the Wild Goose. Oh, wow. Well, she's up on 17th. Close to me, you know, in the burbs. Yeah, you are. So <clears throat> when she was at the old place in Lido, remember? Mm-hmm. I got the worst haircut of my career there. This guy just, and I, 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 I typically, it, listen, I just prefer a female to cut my hair. Let's just leave it at that, right? But I was up against it. I think we had a big fucking Hollywood weekend coming up, and you're like, go over there, and Chanel couldn't fit me in. So, and I could, I could, Risk. I could see what he was doing, and I, I, I just, uh, I said, it's, it's almost like, you know, you ever go to a spa and like the massage starts and she's kind of too physical or it's too, and you're like, let her, let her do her thing. Yeah. Like, let her get going here. And then we sort of you know what this massage is half over. Like, it's been brutal. The haircut. And then all of a sudden I looked up and it was too late. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. Oh my God. What the fuck just happened? You here? just touched on it. I don't like to look up when I'm getting the haircut. Like, and if it's a new guy, if it's a new guy, you got to look up. Like, I don't want to stare at my fucking, you know, at the, at the dude. Or the girl cutting my hair the whole time. I just want to enjoy it, relax. I, I often fall asleep. Yeah, I feel so good. I, I I never thought I'd I'd hear the day you didn't want to look at yourself in the mirror. Yeah, well, I, this is when I don't. <laughs> but I'm with you. All right. Why not have a TV right there? Right. If I opened up my own or a TV on, in the mirror or a TV in the mirror, but I don't want to look at myself either. I guess I, I don't. I'm paying you good money. I don't want to look at myself. No. Why don't you just do what you do? Make me look, you know, good. Yeah. I gotta get on TV every Tuesday. Yeah, no, you 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 get the haircuts looking sharp, but I get I get a haircut probably once a month, once every three weeks, and listen, I get about five to seven days of where my hair is where I like it. Or early on, it's probably too short. Yeah, I get five to seven days where it's great, then it's too long. Yeah. So I don't. It's, yeah, you too. I feel like you're gonna do maybe a new haircut this year. Maybe? No, I I, I like what Brooks Kepka just did for the Ryder Cup. No, I can never grow my hair that long too, I'm like a mullet. I've always said this too. Like you look at guys like Tom Brady, Brad Pitt. If you can wear your hair long and then wear it short, I think that's when you really go down as like a fucking G. I right. got one haircut, man. It's high and tight. It's getting thinner by the day. I, I can't change it up now. It's too late. But at least Ash knows she gets the cowlicks for me and she gets that little top part. She, she's got me to a T. Like, boom. Cowlicks trick. I'm actually going trick. the opposite way of what I usually go today. I usually go this way. It does look a little different, doesn't it, Max? It looks a little different. definitely got to fluff it up. No, no, no. Leave it. It's good. Just don't. to give it a little light. <laughs> Just a little uh, extra texture. Yeah. Speaking of a little life, uh, happy birthday to our boy. Saturday night, uh, Joffrey Lupel. 40th. 
Welcome to the 40 Club Loop. Yeah. I'll be the last man standing. You got till October 7th, buddy. But uh, it was great. Great little party up in Santa Monica. Got to see Kevin Connolly, Mike Comrie, uh, Dion Phaneuf, yeah. his beautiful wife, Alicia Cuthberg. Beautiful. Uh, it was a star studded cast. It was. Yeah. Loop for you, the star studded cast. It was an all star cast. I actually looked at, over at Flowers one time and said, How'd you get in this party? <laughs> how'd, you, how'd you get in here? You got the least amount of resume in this whole fucking place. But um, happy God. birthday to him. I was fucking hurt. And yeah, you were. I stayed up to. Yeah, did a pretty good shift. Not bad. We went back to Loops' house and played pool till, I don't know, 6 30 in the morning. That's impressive. Yeah. Yeah. See, the, I actually enjoy having kids now and responsibility in the morning because I would have been there right with you. And Sunday was a great day sitting around. It's nice weather, football Sunday. I was like, is anyone alive? Where is everybody? What are we betting on? Um, so I had a good morning though. It was good. Let's good talk morning of bets. Let's talk bets here. Yeah. I had a good weekend again. I, I fucked up. Listen, the Cowboys, I didn't know that their offensive line was banged up and I forgot that Diggs was out for the year. So I, I lost that one. Um, Seahawks, shout out to A, a Hall earlier in the week, told me the Seahawks are a lock. They were a lock. Uh, last night I took the Eagles, go birds, and I took the Bengals money line. So I won those two things. So the only bet I lost, oh, no. I took the fucking Raiders at home. What was I thinking, man? I think the Steelers are legit. I think the Steelers D and their quarterback being young and just even buzzing. Um, they're a good. They're a good team. They play hard. They're like kind of old school Steelers. They're just a Mike Tomlin Pittsburgh Steelers. They play fucking hard football. That TJ Watt is a fucking beast. Menace out there. He's a game wrecker. And then who's the other guy? They got High Tower or not High Tower? But the other guy that plays on the line with them. Those two guys together. Game over. Game over. Pickett looks better. They're starting to run the ball. I think the Steelers are legit, but. Listen, Jimmy Garoppolo, like, for as much pussy as he's probably getting off the field, like, he's not the guy. And I'm starting to say this, too. Josh McDaniels, without Tom Brady, and I think he's just, a, you know, a regular coach. I, I don't know. I, After the call in the thinking? fourth quarter, yeah. I mean, fourth and four from, like, their 10, and you... Kick it? Not even 10. I think it was from the seven. Kicking it. You're, You're dead. I know, I know, no. That's the That's not football. Even if it's Jimmy Garoppolo. I would have even said, if I'm the quarterback, keep me out there. We got a better chance of getting this touchdown than fucking kicking one and trying to get another touchdown. It's not like you're down six. You know, you're down down eight. Um, throwing the Bills there, by the way, but throwing the Bills is a lock of the week, too. They were fucking, they're good. They played a good game. You were, you were, you were after week one a little worried about your boy. Yeah, so, but that was a tough game. Week that one was a tough them. game. Week one, but then week two, blowout. Week well, three now, blowout. Who um, they play? I'm drawing a blank. They kicked the shit out of, uh, oh, they went in and beat the Commanders? The yeah. Bill, yeah, they yeah. did. It was Commanders a good play first two. Yeah, first quarter was good, and then it was just a it was a takeover. Yeah. Stefan Diggs and, and my boy Josh Allen, I think they're back. Uh, they put whatever feud they had aside, and they're back playing some good football. I like when the quarterback and the star receiver get at, get at it on the sidelines, by the way. I like that. Like, hey, fuck, Uppy, throw me the fucking ball. Fuck you, Obi, get open. I like that stuff, yeah. right? Like, you got to have that competitive edge. It seemed like A.J. Brown and... Uh, and our boy last night got it back to, together. I mean, that play the Eagles do of where where they just get hurt, so they they said, "What can he squat?" Like, did I hear like three hundred sixty pounds or something like yeah, that? Yeah, and he just he and gets those two yards and gets left. behind him and just fucking pushes his big old what, what's Pat McAfee called the tush push or something, and they just fucking drive him in there. Thirty eight for forty one on that play overall since Hurts has been a quarterback. Forgetting like the one forget yard, that one two yard. yard, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I almost I almost went Buccaneers, man, and I was like sitting there because I was like, ah, oh, what a great story. And then I'm like, who they beat? They beat the Giants and the Bears, right? Or no, they beat the Bears and the I don't know who else they beat, but two bad teams. And I'm like, I told myself after Baker Mayfield years ago threw four picks when he was Playoffs, for, for the Cleveland Browns, I would never bet him again. So I just took the birds, thank God, because it was a beatdown. They beat Vikings week one. Vikings stink. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, <laughs> Jefferson. Yeah, Jefferson. Well, thank you, thank you for. I'd love for this Jefferson to get traded somewhere. Well, Kirk oh, Cousins is going to get traded, don't you think? Is he to the Jets? What are they waiting for? I don't know. Yeah, I they just traded. signed uh, Trevor Simeon, like a washed up yeah. bounce around the league guy. Is that who they got? That's who they literally just news came out like thirty minutes ago. Fucking Trevor Simeon played for the Broncos. You know this kid. I was hoping it'd be Matty Ice come back. Yeah, he's looking a little. Uh, he's Matty a little Ice. high and tight on on air now. His, Have you seen him? His boots are slower. Working Ryan. for CBS now. He's like kind of. It's not. I want to see him as a QB. You're not going to. one of those guys. You you're going to see him at the fucking you know, alumni game <laughs> playing flag football, but you're not going to see him out there. I'd like to see him on the course too, Matty. Come on. Listen, anytime Joe Namath finally goes on at New York radio station and says I, he's sitting off of Zach Wilson, I mean, I think you got to listen to, yeah. to Joe. He's the only one to ever win the Super Bowl for you. 
I don't know. I don't think Trevor Simeon, Alex, nice drop in there, by the way. Thanks for that fall. But I don't think he's the answer either. But I don't know. We'll see. I feel bad because there was so much hype for them. And I think their D is good. That why not go out there and get like Jacoby Brissett or I don't know. Like there's got to be somebody else, isn't there? Trevor Simeon, is that the answer? Know. Ryan Fitzpatrick is always good to come back. He's got a nice cushy job. He's yeah, doing he Draft Kings commercials with Kevin I Hart. I saw that. Yeah, Philip yeah. Rivers. Philip Rivers, 10 kids later. I hated the way that guy threw the ball. I can't watch. That, that's a quarterback I hated to watch. That was my quarterback. Hey, that's my quarterback. He's my quarterback. Yeah, you got to love that. Every time a quarterback it hurts, like Kaepernick still, you know, go out on X and be like, yeah, I'm ready when you are. He hasn't played in, what, six fucking years? Yeah, I know. Like, is he thinks he could just jump back in there and sling it or what? What's he been doing? No idea. I'm getting old now, too. Yeah, like, I get it, buddy. Like, it, it all sucks. And it sucks what happened to him, probably. But, like, you can't think, you can't honestly think he can play now. Just fire him in there, though. Give him a chance. I, I guess you could. But. No, it'd be funny to see him get, you know, kind of rock. Just some GM's like, all right, come back. Come on in. Yeah. Give him one series. Like, get the fucking right. <laughs> <laughs> get the fucking right. Um, fantasy football up dog. I'm two and one. The post Mahomes. I, I had a big, big injury below Mike Williams. Um, Max, I was picking your brain before. Updog offered me a trade for Mike Williams and, and uh, Boyd. Saturday for, night. For Sutton and Saturday night. Hollywood Brown. Mike, Mike Williams gets hurt Sunday. The trade is still on the table. It's not. It's still on the table. I accept it, but then let him know because the guilt sets in as my business partner. But whose fault is that? Like, Uppy's got to know enough to get that trade off the books when somebody gets hurt like that. You, you can't leave it on the live wire like that, can you? So what is it like? You get There's a, there's a uh, veto period. It, or did, was it just you hadn't accepted the trade yet? I sent him the trade Saturday night, but we were getting pinned. So I said, look, I sent you a trade. Sunday, oh, Sunday, he, you know, watches his game, and then he watches his guy get hurt, leave the game. Professional, Max. I'm leave the game squad. with a bad knee, like he's getting carted off, and he goes on and then Makes finds sense. and then accepts the trade. <laughs> Which is completely fucking fault. You can't do that. That's like so. Now it's up to the commish to. No, no, no. So it goes through the league. Like the league will look at it and go, "Is this a fair trade?" Like I think that's that was what happens now. Now I voted no. It's not a fair trade because I had a, I have a shot at the you know the veto yeah, not too. Now, yeah. But I, but I went on there. And by the way, this stupid Yahoo. Maybe DraftKings had sorted out better. But this Yahoo Sports thing, it's like you can't fucking cancel this trade. Like I can't go on there and cancel. It. I don't know. It's because he already accepted it. Hold it's on. bullshit. Hold on. Hold, on. Hold on here. Let me just tell you what time. Pending transaction. When did he? Can you see that? No, no. I just want to know what time. You'll see like the times of the transaction. Totally. Can yeah. you email? Stand by here. Yeah, I couldn't okay. find so it's the league page. And there's at 11, 11, 18 a.m. Yesterday morning. This is Monday morning now, gentlemen. Sick trade except. Fucking Sutton had so many opportunities to get like 30 points yesterday. That's what he texts me. So at 1118, he still doesn't know Williams is out. I go, fella, Williams is out for the year. Just announced today. You might want to cancel that trade. Oh, wow. Canceled. I could have fucked you, by the way. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha. When do we hear back about the sprinter? <laughs> <laughs> when do we hear back about the sprinter? So at 1118 on Monday, he still thought the trade was, he still thought uh, Williams yeah, got hurt. Because I wasn't watching Williams. He's not my guy. You got him in a trade. Yeah, but I asked you Saturday. You didn't accept it. <laughs> well, sorry. I was you waited for him to blow his fucking ACL out to <laughs> my team's in to accept. My team's in. I'll still make a trade with you, bud, but you gotta take that guy off the table. Yeah, I don't I just picked up, you know who I hope I got a waiver speaking of uh former Vikings is uh Adam how do you say his name? Thylan or Thielen that Thielen. Yeah, I like him. Is he good? He plays for the Panthers. I had him last year. He's been like the number one receiver for the Panthers yeah. the last two weeks. But by the way, he was in yeah. Minnesota last year, right? Yeah. Yeah, I liked him. Like, I had a long him time, yeah. By the way, I got Jones running back. That Ayuk or Ayuk. Ayuk. He's coming back next week, though. Okay, and then Watson, right, is here for the Packers. They are all, they haven't played a game. Yeah. That's the thing about fantasy. When, when you get banged up, it's like, bang up. Jefferson. You I'm, won, though, right? Are you? No, Loop will beat me. Loop will beat you. Loop's got a good team. Judy he does. Judy alerts, what he called. Um, I'll talk to you about trade, but let's yeah. just be realized that I, I came to you and said, hey, buddy. No, I realized that. Okay, okay. Yeah, that's the smart, that's the right thing to do. You don't get haunted all season because you I accepted just, a bad trailer. I'm asking if you would have done the same thing to me as well. I'm really asking. Oh, 100%. Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah right. Uh, up dog, Ryder Cup week. I got the I got the Adair Manor 2027 on. Uh, our guest this week at Fellow Friday uh, is somebody that's over there at the Ryder Cup right now. I'll just leave it at that. But as of right now on DraftKings, um, USA minus 140, Europe plus 110, 
Um, you know, I'm a golf nerd, this, this type of tournament. So I've been watching live from the Ryder cup for the last two days in the fetal position on my couch. The rough <laughs> is thick, man. The rough is thick, Uppy. The rough is thick. Um, there's water everywhere. It looks, dude, I mean. Does it look like the U.S. Open? It just looks like you got to hit it straight. Yeah. You know, you got to hit it straight. Okay. And can the Americans do that? I don't know. Yeah. Well, I right? mean, fuck. The, who, who won the U.S. Open this year? Was it American? Wyndham Clark. Yeah. He's on the team. He's on the team. Brian, Liss Brian Harmon won the yeah. Open Championship. He's on the team. I think just because of that, I think there's a little more mojo going in than, you know, although Victor Hovland won the FedEx yeah. out, coming in strong. Rory. Good player, Rory. Rory stinks. <laughs> Rory can't, he can't putt. putt. If I, if match play, I'd be like, I'll play. He's got the just... yips and he can't putt, although he's good one-on-one. -on -one. You don't want to face off against Rory when he's just coming out of a workout, doing some fucking bench and deadlifts, yeah. and then he steps up and hits a 360. But I like, uh, I like for, for some stupid reason, I think the Americans are going to break this little... A 30 year streak that they've been 30 years yeah 30 years of not winning on european soil yeah no listen i'm pulling for the u.s obviously our boy max homa you know we got to spend a little bit of time with brooks kepka at the grove with gretz and and he seems like an absolute beauty um let me ask you this pulling for him after day when one it comes to betting, after day one is there still like a line on the tournament after you're oh yeah right oh yeah so do you want to maybe sit in the weeds day one watch what happens and great point by you so Go back a couple years ago to Whistling Streets, the Europeans were huge underdogs and they still had Poulter and Sergio and all. And I'm like, fuck, I don't know. I think this European team, what we all know is the biggest beatdown ever. And as the line change, and then you can start betting on on individual matches. Yeah. You're right. So you can, it's almost better to maybe chill and see how it unfolds. Yeah. Like take, take, right. a, couple, take a couple team matches early. Like if you do like Spieth and Thomas just because you like the camaraderie, no matter who they play, you just take them. Okay. Right. Like you, you know, and our guest that's going to come on this weekend, I think that's what we should pick his brain on is what pairings do you like? What pairings would you trust just because they're boys? Yeah. And they, in the past, they played together and they're just, they're unstoppable. And those guys would be. So the USA, they practiced this morning and they went out with Cantley and Scheffler. Scheffler. Yeah. Spieth and Thomas were stroking each other off out there. They love each other. Yeah. Um, Kepka and Harmon. Yeah, that was what, yeah. Homa. Two badass. And Marikawa. Yeah, and I can't remember. California boy. Yeah, I can't remember the rest. Jeez, I think he's, he was exactly right. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know. Did, did, listen, so they're going out in foursome. So foursome's the hardest one. That's alternate shot. That has favored Europe big time. Four ball has been favored the States, which is just like what we play on a Friday, right? Just mm -hmm. whoever gets the little score. So if you're looking to bet it out there, fellas, I would lean towards the Europeans and the foursomes. And then the four ball probably go back to the States. But I'm just saying, does the USA, do they have enough balls to like take on the course, first of all, because the rough is gnarly, mm -hmm. to put up with the drunken European fans yelling at them? And if they get off to a tough start for some, can they fight their way back? Like, I think they got to get off to, if USA gets off to a good start, wins that first session, look out. But if they get smoked for nothing, it could be talking, turn the lights out early. I don't know. Let me ask you this. No live tour guys on the European team. Not a lot. I think I think a lot comes down to how Brooks Kepka is on this team. For for whatever reason, he's been the outsider, but being the guy he is, if he plays like he did at Whistling Straits Obes, that like kind of fuck you, five majors, I'm badass, although I went to live, I'm still gonna come back and kick your ass. Dick shows up on the first team before yeah. Yeah, yeah. Let's not just say. If the US is allowing live players and just one because he won it basically he won that he won the PGA, PGA and that put his points right into the mix. Yeah, so, so the Ryder Cup is not run by the PGA Tour, it's run by the PGA Tour of America and the European Tour. So Brooks Kepka won the PGA well, of America. Yeah. He won that so they I think when it came down to it, they probably said, Hey, Zach, you're taking them. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, and when the Live Tour and PGA came and said they did figure out some sort of agreement, I think that kind of put all the players into a, you have a chance to be on the Ryder Cup team. Like there, there's a chance if you can qualify with points, although you don't play in any fucking events, but if you win a major. Yeah, like Brooksy almost, like uh, our boy actually home and knocked him out the last week. Kepka was qualified with just three majors, with winning the PGA, second at Augusta, and then whatever you did at the Open. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah, I think so, yeah. Am I missing one? I don't know. Well, US uh, Open, Open Championship, Augusta P. So four tournaments, he was had enough points to qualify. And then Max knocked him out the last week. So that's how good he played in the major championships. So he was a captain's pick. Captain's pick. Oh, wow. 
So here's the groups. I kind of fucked it up. Ups. Group A was was Spieth and Thomas, Cantley yep. and uh, Alexander. Group B was Morikawa and Harmon, Fowler and Homa. No, sorry, Harmon and Fowler, Morikawa and, Ho- and Homa, Kepka and Clark, oh. your boy Scotty, and Sam Burns. Ah, so it was a much different. But Sam they, Burns they, and two, Scotty went to college together. I think. Yeah, they're Texas boys. I don't know. I can't wait. It's going to be tough to watch it because it starts so fucking early, right? Where are you going to be? <laughs> I'm going somewhere to Wichita. Mid- somewhere in the middle of the country. I'm just hoping I get hit by a fucking tornado. But uh, it's fun to bet on. I up dog. I think if anything, you're right. Maybe maybe let it play out, see how it goes. But it, it's fun to bet. There's so yeah. many, obviously, matchups, you know, game to game. And then the, the, the odds change, like you said. But course looks great. And how much good food they're going to have over there. I mean, fuck. Win or lose, you get the fucking penne pasta in you, eh? I'm about get it in you. the wine... Yeah, you know the accent. So I was actually great. thinking about you, the the head guy, the CEO, or the president of the PGA of America. They're asking like, "What's your week look like?" He's like, "Fuck, the one night I got three dinners, three dinner parties." <laughs> I'm like, "Fuck, the up dog would like that three dinner parties." You guys, the team, be like, "Hey, up dog, like keep, you know, keep it under control here this week. Yeah, <laughs> hey, we're in the Ryder Cup. Hey, keep the PGA Tour of America Amex bill below fucking." Um, yeah, it's gonna be a fun week. I love the Ryder Cup. Two hundred fifty thousand tickets sold. Seven hundred fifty thousand people applied for tickets. Up dog. Wow. That's how many people wanted to go over there. And listen, we've been to the Ryder Cup. Yeah. It's a made-for-TV event. When you watch it there, it's it wasn't perfect, right? No, you it's see anything. You can't. Yeah. But you, I'm sure if you have a sick tent and an area that, you know, go in between the ropes. Is that not there. the event where everyone dresses up and, like, you know, all the Americans dress up patriotic and chant and yeah. do all that stuff? It sure is. But, like, the thing of it is that there's only four matches on the course at, at one time, right? So if you go to a normal PGA Tour event, there's, there's yeah, courses out there. going on. Yeah, so you just got to go to a hole and wait till they come through. Like you, you can't really follow them. Uh-huh. Like there's so many people, but yeah, it's a great atmosphere. I mean, it's going to be insane. By the way, this Jay, you were touching on a DraftKings app, the tournament lines, tournament props, team yeah. props, USA props. I mean, there's everything. Correct score. Yeah. If you really want to go full DGen, you just get on here and just start there's hammering so, some yeah. little little teasers to the week. Totally. There's yeah. all kinds of bets on DraftKings. So, uh, check it out. Updog, you mentioned good wine. Speaking of wine here, the Oakland A's. Listen, nobody loves Camus more than me. It's my favorite bottle of red wine. Yeah, but Beckham's, you got yeah. Beckham for his birthday. I got Beckham for his first birthday of bottle of wine. Wait, wait nice, 18 right? years to drink that. Yeah. Hey, hey, think about how good it will be when he cracks that fire. I wrote his name on it, the date yeah. from Obi, yeah, Uncle yeah. Obes. Yeah, so, oh. sick gift, but. We're not going to wait till he's 19. Though. I'm going to crack that with the way he's probably 16. He likes Labatt beer. He's been drinking Labatt's. Yeah, get the guy blue light, eh? Yeah, get, a, get the well, kid a blue light. The Oakland A's, I get it. Listen, nobody goes to the games. We've all seen Moneyball. They're up against it, but they got him a fucking ni- Miguel Cabrera 90, bo- 90 bottle bottle of Camus. Not even like a reserve. $90 bottle. bottle. Yeah. How many did they get him? 90 one, of them? One. Oh, jeez. They gave him one bottle for the, maybe they got him more, but for the photo, for the photo, there was one bottle. At least a case, eh? Me and you got loops, me and you sent loops three bottles for his birthday 10 years ago to yeah. when he was playing for the Leafs. Yeah, they were the special select. Yeah. It was like two, 250. It's tough look for the A's, man. Tough I know. Look Plus, you get, a, you get the box and you get the wooden, you know, the, yeah, it looks like yeah. great. You get all the styrofoam in there. It's not major league. I mean, the, the, no. the, the fucking. The A's angel, really aren't. Yeah, the Angels got him a nice surfboard with all his accomplishments on it. Like a nice keepsake that you could keep in your house. That's cool. That's nice. Big Albert was out there. You know? How many teams did he play for? Miguel Cabrera? Yeah. Played for the Mi- yeah. Miami Marlins. Big boy. Yeah. And Detroit Tigers. I think that's yeah. it, right, Max? Was, Is there anyone else? So, his heyday was Detroit, right? Yeah. Fuck, he was one of the Madden titles. Title. Last uh, triple last crown. Triple crown. Triple crown. Yeah. Triple crown. Big righty. Fucking big boy. Huh? He could use those epic now, though. His two uniforms get a little tight. That's when you know it's time to retire in baseball. Eh? When you're uniforming, you're fucking like, Christ, I can't even get my belt done up anymore. Tough. Get him on Life Force. Yeah, Life Force. He's yeah. still be playing. He might be able to stretch it a couple more years. Yeah. How much money has he made? Can you can you guys look up his career earnings real quick? I bet he you on that, he'd win the good jewel fall, crown. He'll fall off this fucking chair. His career earnings? Two yes. Fifty? More than that. What? I'm going to say more. As a what? First base? As just a baseball player. I'm going to say over 250000 250. Million. Million. I'd say probably made 25 for the last 10 years, right? His last contract was 250. Yeah. How many years is that? Eight. Eight years. Wow. So he's probably made half, he's probably made 500 or something. Maybe not quite 500, but he's made. He doesn't need a podcast. He should be doing a baseball podcast. Let's just say he doesn't need a podcast. But uh, Princey, a little question here tied it in. Princey doing his thing. Do NHL teams do retirement giveaways? Sorry. Do NHL teams give away retirement gifts to players on farewell tours when they come to town? Getzlav, Marlowe, 
I don't, I don't know. Do they? Um, it's a good question, actually. You know what? I, I think there's maybe nights where it's like a in honor of recognition nights as they come through. If it's a farewell tour, this only happens in like the last. Say Toronto was going to play San Jose, and it was fully known that Patrick Marlowe was retiring this year. I maybe they would have their family there on the ice, like a thank you. Um, but it's not so much usually. Think- it's not so much usually for retirement as it is like. Thanks for being our captain for 12 years. Yeah. You know, that sort of appreciation night, right? Yeah. I don't it's think, not like, congrats, here's your retirement gift. Yeah. I don't but, think other teams get them gifts. No. Not like baseball. No. Although I've been on teams where, you know, a, a couple guys will go, hey, let's send, you know, let's send up, although they didn't send me anything. Let's say, hey, let's send up. <laughs> Let's send up you a bottle of, you know, wine. He's retired, eh? Like, fuck you. Guy, up you fuck. guy wants to get drunk. Like, <laughs> get him a fucking bottle. How many times do hockey teams play Christ. each other within the division, like, in a season? Wow, great question. So when me and Uffie were in the we were in the midst of the middle of our career, Max, we didn't play every team. Now they play every team once. So, like, for example, my year in Vancouver, we played the Edmonton Oilers six times. Three at home, three on the road. Now it's two, two and two. That's enough that if you play a whole career in one spot, you're playing a team six times every year. That's that makes sense to get them a gift. Like baseball, that's yeah. why they do it is because they you know they play within the division up till this year sixteen times or nineteen yeah, times I think yeah. it was before this year. And they're all pussies. Our division now is is sometimes sometimes it's two at home and three on the road. Other times it's three at home, two on the road, or two and two. Yeah. But every team plays other teams in non conference play, non divisional play one and one. One and one. Other conference. Yeah. But remember remember like probably Totally. We, we used even, to play fucking the Tampa Bay Lightning. It was we the wouldn't even go, was like eight times. Yeah. And like you wouldn't even go play Vancouver that year. Like there was years yeah. we didn't go play when I was in the West, we didn't go play Tampa or Florida, or we didn't go to New York. Penny pinching. You gotta play every team once. I know. Uh I do I would say this the best gift to give anyone, I think your boy Jovo got it for retirement gift. Is a route at Augusta. Yeah. If you can get the, if you can get your teammate, like that's what Getsy should have got. Totally. Yeah. Knowing how much he loves golf, but who on that, who in that dressing would have been able to pull that off for? Him? Well, the Solani, you call or, or the owner. You say Tamo, who do you got? Yeah. Uh, we got we got Lou, um, a badass road bike, probably a twenty thousand dollar road bike. I didn't even know he liked biking here. He did not. I never. Actually, he used to ride the bike after games, but that's because we yeah. had to in Vancouver. And then. Uh, who else did we get a nice book? Well, yeah, we got Jova one. Um, so when you got Jova, that, is, that yeah. is that a foursome or just he gets to go play with a member? Like, does he get to bring three of his buddies? He played with one member. One member. And he got to bring two of his buddies. Yeah. I think he brought yeah. his brother and... That's uh, sick. Yeah. That is so sick. Who else? Who else? Would, did you ever get a retirement gift for someone? No. Uh, <laughs> or no. No, I didn't. No, it's, it's no, kind of unique. Like, it's... It's not every day that like the guy retires and plays his last game on your team. Yeah, and you got to have a legit good career. Obviously, like yeah. you got to be playing in a place for a long time, like Getzi or Jovo or Marlow. Like no, and actually, what we're talking about here, we're talking about retirement gifts. Jovo got a thousand game gift, thousand game gift. So this is we're not it, it, kind of odd to do this for a retirement gift. The retirement gift is usually like it's reserved for the elite. That's yeah, I know. I know, it's but, usually, but it's like usually, Gretzky plays his last game in MSG, like waves around, like everyone knows it's his last fucking game. No one does that. It's usually a gift certificate yeah, to couples therapy is what the boys yeah. are going to need, eh? Yeah. Here's a good divorce lawyer, bud, because you're yeah. fucking going to need it when you retire here. Yeah, here's the address <laughs> to the fucking Betty Ford clinic <laughs> when you're done. Anyway, but here's a good divorce lawyer after your old lady kicks you out after six months, but uh, thousand games, you're right. It's, it's the, usually the thousand. More, that's almost yeah. more important than anything in hockey. Big it's a thousand game one, so. Um, with that, Uppy's world party time, <laughs> excellent. Uh, I'm gonna start. I, I want to start. I'm, I'm gonna take the reins for Uppy's world this week. Oh, and obviously, right. it's your segment. You can jump in, but boys, I'm gonna say that Uppy and, and his his wife are the only people in the history of parents to ever do this. Okay, they took Izzy and Beckham to Disneyland with a couple of their friends. They were at Disneyland all day. After Disneyland, they humped, jumped in their car. <laughs> they humped. <laughs> They humped on the fucking Pirates of the Caribbean. They humped on the Pirates of the Caribbean. Then they jumped in their car and they drove all the way to Palm Springs to watch Bob Moses and Odessa, who are two sick, sick bands. But I don't think there's anyone that's ever gone to Disneyland parlayed with a fucking EDM show in the desert. Like, are you fucking kidding me? I went to Disneyland for four hours with my nephews. I couldn't even walk out of there and little go dance around the thing. So, up this world, party time. If anyone's ever done that, please, you know, write into missingcurfew.com or fucking DM us. 
but Disneyland to Bob Moses, that's one that's one spectrum to the other. That's Don, that's Mickey Mouse and whoever, and just half naked <laughs> chicks dancing around everywhere. <laughs> So well, how was it? How, it was great. I mean, it was great. Feel? Disney was great. And shout out, I had uh, Jordan Tutu, his wife Jen, and their kids in town. They were here all week. It was great. And um, listen, that was we did we did an eight thirty to two thirty shift at Disney, and then like you said, we got home, dropped the kids off to the mother in law, and then we hit the road two and a half hours, checked in, had dinner at the Nest, great spot, went right over to the show. Over. Yeah, right over the show. Um, met our boy Jimmy from Bob Moses. Shout out. He's a huge fucking curfew fan. And good band boy. And he like he was skating at that Accenture Arena. The place the Firebirds play. By the way, they lost in overtime game seven. You know what? At home. I watched that is fucking I tough, actually but. watched it. So a lot of, you know, it's a little touch and go in there because, you know, heartbreak kid. But uh it was it was a great show. And then we went out after actually too. And then I came in here for some shows the next day, which was I don't know, probably even more impressive than what <laughs> The day I mean, the whole two-day so. stretch is impressive. Yeah. Yeah, I was yeah. back here for, I think, 11 o'clock in studio, so it was good. Yeah. I, I thought you were taking the... Oh, so you stayed the night out there. Stayed the night. Oh, I thought you were sprinting her back. You stayed, stayed the night. Where'd stayed you stay? There. At the Nest. You stayed at the yeah. Nest? Yeah, there's, hotels a, there? there's a hotel right attached to it called the Sand Hotel. It's a great hotel. Is it I, Nest the arena? No, the Nest is this place, like... It's a little fucking steakhouse bar, like think of a restaurant in the desert. No, think of Quiet Woman. Yeah, exactly. Have you been to Quiet Woman? You guys probably not. Oh, and CDM, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's that's quiet. exactly it's like what the it Quiet is. Woman out there. Live band, sometimes maybe DJ, Coogs. I mean, good if, steak, great food, great. If you're a Coog looking for a young and up and coming hockey player, head to the Coachella Valley. I mean, you might be able to get one of these young guys before they hit the jackpot. Eh? Like. I wonder what those young guys are thinking when they go out there. Everyone's like older. You're right. You mean this AHL kids? There. Yeah. Yeah. Like, what a place to play though. Golf. They had, a lot, they had a lot of cougs guaranteed. Sunny Bachelor weather. That party central. Yeah, that true. That too. Wait, Palm Springs? They go bachelor oh, parties there. No shit. But you're not going to get the party. Not like Scottsdale. Yeah, I was just going to say, you're not going to. Or Nashville. You're not going to get. You're not going to get the slutty bachelor parties in Palm Springs. Probably right. You're going to get the girls that are coming to spot up and, and probably be faithful to the husbands. Nashville, Scottsdale, you're getting the girls that are looking to maybe make a mistake or two. Yeah. Right? And they uh, do. Fuck it, it's Nashville. Yeah. No one's going to say anything. Um, right? Let's get her going. Yeah. It's a great time. Great time. But anyway, the Sand Hotel's a nice spot. Isn't right? That's a great location too, by the way. Isn't great that, location. Isn't that convenient that there's a hotel attached to the Nest? How have I never known that? Yeah, that's, you know. that's fucking crazy. But uh, I mean, listen, buddy, you're a legend for many reasons, but that one to me is Disneyland into Bob Moses in Odessa. Up his world. Party to time. <laughs> Excellent. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Mr. Curfew, Up Dog. Before we get into the old National League rundown, ex-National Leaguer, I just turned 40. You're about to turn 40. You talk about still playing all the time. I I, I don't want any part of it. But Yarmy Yager, is that how you say it? Yarmer, Yarmer Yager, 35 years of professional hockey. He's 51 years old, and he's going to be strapping him up again in Czech Republic. I mean, God, this guy. Like, I would be living, I don't know, not probably there. You know, I would be he's like in Spain or something if I was him living on the beach. But he just loves it. Hey, you you played with him. You know him better. 35, 35 seasons, brother, of professional hockey. I mean, he's drafted in 1990. Uh, it's just absolutely special. I Looking at this, it's almost like, does he not like like spending time at home? Or does he does he not want to go on vacations in the winter? Like He's devoted 35 years of his winter life to the sport that he grew up, you know, loving and and being really fucking good at it's uh it's special man it's quite the spectacle i think wow. how old was is it special i look at those gordy how right here yeah he played till he's 50 i think did he not in 1980 with jimmy with jimmy carter in the white house so jimmy carter in the white house 52 <laughs> year old gordy Howell played his last nhl game though national hockey imagine we should throw you out there for a shift in the nhl and see how he would do i don't think he'd do very good well, maybe a power play shift down low way, get in front of that, use your body. Put his ass out there. You imagine he had yeah, a big ass. Yeah, imagine one of these young guys, like, you know, picture what's his name in New York, the the good little small righty that wins the. Panarin? No, the defenseman. Adam Fox. Imagine Adam Fox trying to get the puck from Yager behind the net. Like, no chance. <laughs> just no, blocks the yeah, No. Fucking oh, even right now, guy. it'd be impossible to get the puck from him. You know, all the smaller players. Yeah, that's true. There's not many big guys, like, getting. But you could also say Yogs would probably not get to Fox on the four check either no, way, or no kill the car. By the way, Yager's stick was, you know, probably six feet tall. 
It was, it was, a, he has a huge twig and he kept the puck as far out as it's impossible. One of the strongest guy, him and him and Peter Forsberg, I think I, I, maybe big, maybe big Walt Kachuk in St. Louis year. I played against him too, but like I remember Forsberg, I went and took a run at him and, and he gave me the old ass back and I was like, holy shit. Same with Yogg's like down low, so strong pens, throw Dustin's penner in the mix of that thing. Yeah. But Yogg's down low was, was a beast, but, um, <laughs> Jacob Forcheck is the yeah, coach of the team. Is he that. still getting paid by somebody? I probably. I no played with this kid. He's a great kid. I, I love Jake. He was he was awesome. But now he's into the coaching uh, coaching world. What's it going to be like to not put Yager out on the power play? Well, you Yager's just go on the power play. I mean, he own, owns the team. He owns the team. If you want to get your paycheck, Yager's is out there. But, like, does he take the bus to games? Or does he, does he fly in his own plane? Like, I just can't imagine. Or does he just play home games? Because imagine having to ride the bus at 51 years old, like as much as you love the game, come on, man. And getting off the bus yeah. and having to play. The Czech Republic's not a very big country. Yeah, I don't think so either. But just, so, it's, yeah, so by the way, Jake's contract's owned by the Arizona Coyotes. Shocker. They own probably everyone else. Yeah, that's who it was. Um, just turned 34. And uh, I would say Yogg's is probably just showing up here when he wants to. For a home game. Whenever his legs are feeling good. Yeah. You know? <laughs> so once a month. Yeah, the HC Cladno. Now, he still looks like he's in good shape. I mean, his beard obviously is super great, and that makes him look old. But I saw him uh, with the, like just in his gitch. He still looks like he's pretty jacked. I mean, he was never the fastest guy. So, like you said, he'll use his smarts. But I don't know, man. That's just a long time to be playing hockey up dog. So, guess what I'm saying is there's still there's still an opportunity for everybody if you want to play. Fuck, I'd love to. <laughs> I'd love to. Um, I'd love, love to just get out there with the kids eh? and see how these young kids are looking. And fast. Maybe we go out and watch some cam. The Czech League's good league, man. Is it? It's a fucking good league. It's a really fucking good league. Like, there's guys over there that played their whole career over there that are good players. Like, that's a good fucking pro league. That's not like, you know, I love my time in Austria, but Austria is probably a step down from that league. But besides the KHL and the Swedish league and Finnish league, that's then Czech, right? Under those leagues. Like, it's German. German. German, German league as well. German's tough league. Yeah, it's a good league. That's actually a really good league. Yeah. But there's some good players in this Czech league, man. It'd be... It's not an easy. It's not an easy oh, place no, to play for, for sure. But. I like the Czech players. Always played hard. They played the right way. Yeah, Czech guys. Yeah. So, I guarantee if he does play on the road, he's going to Prague. Eh? That's one road trip that Yogg is going to make. I can't imagine this team is not far away. Like it's got to be close to Prague. There's no way he's playing have. in the boonies. I don't know. I'll look it up. Up. What is it? Kladno, Czech Republic. Yeah. Max, where's Kladno, Czech? Kladno. There's Kladno. Okay, right there to Prague. I mean, it can't be much further than a 30-minute train ride. Yeah, maybe they jump on the train. Yeah. No, nah, they're busting, let's be honest. You think so? Yeah. Well, if he's the owner, you might be like, boys, I'll, I'll, I'll buck up for the train ride. See how I got to get on this far. That's pretty damn close to Prague. So that's like, you know, that's like going out to Ontario. Not even. Depending on traffic, eh? Yeah. Just driving up to Long Beach. Oh, listen, I played in Austria. Austria is the same size as probably Czech Republic, right? I mean, we still had three-hour fucking bus trips, man. Like, and then you got to get off and play. It's yeah. fucking not easy, man. I mean, Yogg, no, that was the way we... Yogg's is probably in better shape than I was at that age when I was 30. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's, it's crazy. So good luck to him. Keep it going. It's it's crazy to me up, dog, that he's still playing. But uh, I wanted to give some love to, to our boys at the NHL and TNT. They all got a little... Uh, I guess a little multi-year extension. Any any idea what the guy could be? I have heard. Maybe, no. Ninety nine. What do you guys say? What are we getting, boys? Yeah, ninety nine. Just getting whatever he wants. Bro. Yeah, totally. But all the boys are coming back. They got they got Hank back, and then Brian Boucher's new new guy on there. Our boy Panger, Jennifer Botterill. So they got the band coming back together, and our girl, the first lady of hockey, Jackie Redmond. She'll be doing her thing. Well deserved, Jackie. Yeah. By the way, this is a great this is a great lineup. These guys yeah. are great. They do an incredible job. Great for hockey. Uh, they've got some. They've got some chemistry. We see that during the playoffs when we get to hang out with them. Um, great team. I love watching these boys do their work. We were honorary members of the NHL TNT panel. I think in the in the playoffs, right? We did our DraftKings commercials, and then during the final, I felt like we were. I think so. We didn't get invited to the team dinners, but we, we did what we asked. But we call ups. We knew where they were going after dinner, right? We knew we knew where to meet up with them <laughs> after dinner. So now nah, they're great for the game. They deserve it. So I, I just wanted to show them some love, up dog, and. Um, like I said, that was fun last year doing those DraftKings commercials for him. Absolutely. But do it again. Um, speaking of contracts here or lack thereof, up dog, Steven Stamkos, 8.5 left of his of his deal. He is 33 going on 34 years old. Listen, the, the Lightning are up against it, right? I mean, let's see how much cap. They got no cap space as it is. Um, you know, they lost Killer. Ryan McDonough had to leave town. 
you know, we knew this was going to happen. But once again, we've talked about this hard cap on this podcast and how we both feel there should be a luxury tax. You don't think Julian Breesbaugh wants to re-sign Steven Stamkos? 100% he wants him back there. But he is going to be 34 years old. He doesn't probably know where the cap's going to go just yet. So that's why he probably couldn't offer him anything, in my opinion. But I hope they find a way to get it done. And if they don't, I'm sure there'll be teams lining up to kick Stammer because he can still fire the puck, make your power play better, and still competes. Yeah, no, and listen, these teams now, when you're, when you're building your team, and we bring this up, but it's a copycat league, right? And, you know, Steven Stamkos and the Tampa Bay Lightning for years have been a team that everyone looks at and says, well, how are they built? How do we how do we keep up with these guys? Well, it starts in net, and you got Vasilevsky making 9.5, and then Kucherov and Point both also making 9.5, and then Sergachev and Hedman below them in the mid-8s. So these guys are... You know, their team, it's it's okay. Are we keeping our captain? And if so, will he take a deal that's maybe less than these guys? I mean, he still got 55 points last year. Yeah. And he still can score 30 goals with his eyes closed. Uh, can he stay healthy? I think if he stays healthy, Obes, and he has a good, you know, start to this year, the team's going to go, okay, are our core group of guys healthy as they get older? Do we have another couple-year push? And then will Steven Stamkos take a four- or five-year deal? I don't know. Like, he probably deserves more obes. He probably deserves six, seven, eight years to me is a little long for a guy at 33. What is he, 33 years old? Yeah. That to me, you know, going into his 40s, I don't know if he's going to get that. But, you know, can you offer him eight bananas for four years to keep him around when all these guys are still healthy? You have another push. Yeah. You might be able to squeeze that sort of deal. Yeah. And the way they do it, like, they lengthen it out. And then on the back end, right, you hope maybe he goes, well, you don't hope, but he goes on long-term IR, right? There's ways to do it where, and this is why Julian Breesball is such a good GM, that you give him that eight-year deal like you're talking about, and maybe they make it like, you know, front-heavy or, or however they're going to do it, and then they just slowly, as Stammer kind of winds down, he doesn't play, right? Yeah. And that brings yeah. down the, and I think like somehow, this is above my pretty good, but brings down the average, you know, the AAV. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I think Stammer should probably take a little bit of a haircut because- you know, he's been in Tampa his whole career. We all know about the state taxes. And here's another reason. His, his estimated career earnings right now is at $99 million. So, you know, I, I think if if they went up to him, I'm shocked they didn't talk a little bit over the offseason, but I think Stanford would take a little bit of a haircut to stay in Tampa, finish career there. He's going to have his jersey retired there. He's already made almost 100 bananas. But it, I was shocked to hear, and I'm glad, I wanted to say this up, so I'm glad that he came out and was honest and said, listen, I'm a little disappointed that we didn't have a conversation. That's the type of stuff that I think players, especially like Steven Stamkos, tell us how you feel, be honest, and let the fans of the Lightning know exactly what's going yeah. on. But there's got to be a reason for it, right? There's no, you know, yes, is it upsetting? Yes, he's the captain. Yes, he deserves probably having a chat. But I mean, they'd probably, they're probably focused on, you know, Breezeball's a good GM. He's, yeah. he's been there. He's an honest guy. I think Coop's an honest guy. I think their whole team, you know, they look at each other and there's a lot of respect amongst that room. Yeah, he probably just caught in conversation with the with the reporter and ended up saying, "Yeah, you know what? There's been no talk, yeah. and I'm kind of shocked because I wanted to talk, but quite frankly, like that aside, I got another year of hockey here. Let's let's play some hockey. I know things are going to get taken care of. Like I know, I'm not worried. Is he worried? Fuck no, not with 99 million. No, no he's not worried. Yes, would he have loved a phone call that he didn't have to initiate this summer that says, "Hey, you're our captain. We want to keep you here. What are you What are you looking for? Yeah, but." That's not always like the case. Yeah. Yeah. No, I just, I think he's probably a little bit shocked because the guys that they have kept in Tampa, they have rewarded with long-term deals. You know, uh, the guys we said they had to let go, hard cap era that we're in. I I don't know, but I I know this, Nikita Kucherov career earnings. Do you want to take a guess at what it is? It's less, it's it's a lot less than Stammer. 65. Wow. Good guess. 58. Wow. So I guess what I'm getting to is Stammer, Stammer, and well deserved. He's made a lot of dough. So I would like to see him headman seventy million. I would like to see him. I'd like to see him stick there and maybe take a little bit of a haircut and figure it out. But for sure, because when you think of Tampa Bay Lightning, you think of Steve Stammer. I think it's a ninety-five percent chance he's staying there. Yeah, he is. I like him stirring the pot though, right? And getting it again. Yeah. Hey, what's going on here? I'm just a little surprised. Well, he, and he deserves to. Yeah, it's not like he's a guy that's like, oh, Stammer just went off in the media and said he's, you know, it's Stammer. Guys fucking earned his right to speak. If you don't sign with the Tampa Bay Lightning and you're Steven Stamkos, I mean, I've I've saw some stuff on X and Instagram. Uh, a lot of rumblings about the New York Rangers. A lot of Rangers fans saying they would love to have them there. There'll be a lot of rumblings everywhere, everywhere. for this guy. Are we yeah. kidding me? Steven Stamkos. Yeah, he doesn't want to leave there, though. He's got a great pad there. I mean, listen, everybody, 
you know, we've, you know, Killer obviously signed out here with the Ducks. When he retires, he's going back to Tampa. I think the big rig is going to go back. To, I mean, they have a great thing there. And when you win a championship, you don't want to leave. So, like you said, I think it will get done. Well, and it should get done. What about Chicago? You got everyone, Chicago. You got everyone going to Chicago, eh? Huh? Well, if they gave Paris $4 million, what were they going to give Stammer? Fourteen. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Paris. I can't wait to watch the Blackhawks play. But we're going to get into our preview show next week where me and the Updog. It's going to be great. Yeah, we've disagreed on some stuff leading up to this, so it should be good. So, Stammer, I hope it gets figured out. Stay healthy. Coop and the boys down there, we're always pulling for you here at Missing Curfew. It's milk carton time, Updog. And out here in Orange County, there's a couple young studs. Uh, your boy, Trevor Zegris. And a kid that I've got to know really well, Jamie Drysdale, who's Love an him. absolutely beauty kid. kid. He's going to be a great player. Um, obviously, he had a big injury last year. They're both not at training camp. Uh, rumored has it that Zegris is looking for a two- or three-year deal for five bananas, and the Ducks are offering three or four. To me, listen, I, I, I thought Z had a good rookie year. I, I don't think he played as good as he could have last year. It was a tough year for the whole Ducks organization, but I, I, I think a lot of it came down to him. To me... I would rather have him out there playing. I would take a one-year deal if I was him. I would say, okay, give me a one-year deal, uh, whatever you want to give him, $4 million. Get back out there, get playing. But a bridge deal to me, two or three years up, then the cap goes up. Zegers can prove himself. He can mature even more. Um, I don't know. Him just sitting out to me, it doesn't make sense right now for his development. I agree. Uh, it's an unfortunate situation that I'm sure will get sorted out shortly. But, I mean, you got... You know, when you look at the D, Jimmy Drysdale, he's coming off a bad injury, a shoulder injury. He didn't play much last year, but he has had success so far for a 21-year-old in this league. He's been here. This is fourth year in the league. You got Cam Fowler making 6-5. You gave, he gave Ratko Gouda's $4 million for three years. That's, that's a lot of stuff. And then you need help. So don't keep this guy off. Like, you need this guy back in training camp. He, he should be the one focus. Trevor Zegers aside, you got to get Drysdale sorted out here. Now, Z, we all know Z. He's flashy. He's Mr. Young NHL. He's buddies with all those young, the Hughes brothers and Caulfield, and they're doing their thing, and they're great for the game. You know, he's stuck in Anaheim. Anaheim needs fans. They need to get back to winning. I think if Trevor Zegris matures and buys in, kind of understands that the league isn't all about you know, clicks. backhand sauce. It is not all about clicks. It's about you got to win. You got to get in the playoffs. You got to throw backhand sauce. You don't stop doing that, brother. But you got to get in the playoffs. You're not actually even an NHLer until you fucking play in the playoffs. That's the way I look at it. Yeah. Right. You got to be on a team. You got to get your team. You're a young star. You got to be part of bringing a team that's either drafting you high and has been shitty. You need to bring that team, become a young leader buy in, bring that team to the playoffs and turn things around in order to be like a real time NHLer to me. Totally. And, uh, you know, hopefully he gets this sorted out. I just get him take a one, two year deal. Fucking be done with it. Prove everyone wrong. Yeah. That's what, if I was, yeah, everyone I'll take, a, I'll know, take a one year deal at fucking free bananas or whatever they want to give it to him. But mm -hmm. you make a great point about Zegers and all his buddies like Jack Hughes, who by the way had a fucking nasty assist the other night against Montreal, yeah. like came over the blue line. I don't I, I don't watch X curled up. I don't like watch it. exhibition hockey. That's where I fucking draw the line. But I saw this on, on X. He came in eh, 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 and then back through the seam to this kid to Mercer back yeah. door tapping. So I'm interested to talk to you about the devils when we do our preview show next week. Mm -hmm. But listen, it's gotta be hard for Z. Hughes got paid, Caulfield got paid, those are his boys. All these young American born players are getting paid. I get it. He's probably like, Where's mine? Unfortunately, compared to Hughes, you know. Z doesn't deserve it yet. And even Cole Caulfield, probably Z's not in that category. I get that that's hard, but he's got to be out there competing. And for me, once they do get him signed, Alex Killorn, killer, I would put Z Gris sitting beside him in the dressing room, sitting beside him on the plane, and I would say, Z, watch what Killer does every single day. Watch his practice habits, watch his preparation, watch how he fucking ties his fucking tie. Yeah. Because this guy's got two Stanley Cups, and that's why we brought him in here. And Z, that's what I would say to him too. Fucking watch this guy. Because he has all the talent that you said, and 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 the, the sky's the limit. But he's got to learn the little intangibles and and the little stuff you're talking about to help teams win. And that's why you got killer. So I hope it gets done. I want Z out there, but just to be sitting out over you know a million and a half dollars or a million bucks at yeah. this age, fuck, you'll make that up on the back end, Z. You'll make that up on the back end. You know what I mean? I know. And I've over the years, you watch these players sit out, and unfortunately, like it's. It's some guys I've known. Like I look back, and Lupul had to do it one time too after scoring thirty goals, 
Yeah. And he came in and was forced to sign like a bridge deal at three million bucks for three years. I like and I don't even know if he got that much, did he? Crazy, but he did, got like two point something, I think. Yeah, after scoring thirty two. Like, yeah. What are we talking about? Scored here? four goals in the fucking playoffs against let's, the Avs. Let's just play some fucking hockey. Let's play some fucking hockey. I agree. I agree. And you know, I don't know Pat Verbeek from you know, from a hole in the wall. And I kind of respect that he hasn't maybe given in and just said, Hey, we're good. And I want Z to get paid. I think he's a great kid. Same with Drysdale. And I think they both will make their money. But just to be sitting out right now, not going through training camp, is that good for his development? Like, I know, God forbid, something happens to him and, and, and you could get hurt and you want to make as much as you can at this at this time. But Z's 22 years old. Get out there. Get playing. Get this deal done. You'll make it up in this on your next deal. Do you think they're... Um... Do you think there's a little collusion there between these two kids? Are they both like calling each other going, hey, they got to pay us both or we're, we're not going? Uh-huh. I would think like that- the team I would, even, I would think that- I don't even have a full that, roster that with Z, these kids. If, if you want to compare Zegris and Drysdale to missing curfew, I would say that you're Zegris and I'm Drysdale. <laughs> Zegris is saying, hey, we're going to get fucking 12 bananas a year. And I'm like, Uppy, we're not going to get shit. Let's just sign the fucking deal and get back out there and try to get laid and play some hockey. But I would say that Zegris is probably- if anyone telling Drysdale that, I, I I only know you know Jamie a little bit, but he seems like a kind Who of a, means more to the Anaheim Ducks. Which kid? I, and again, I love I love Zegers, but yeah. Drysdale hundred percent. I think so too. Drysdale is a great young player, yeah, right handed defenseman. He's arguably going to be with with some maturity and with some growth. He's their best team man. Yeah, he's a righty shot. He's a little different than Cam Feller, but putting him in spots, he's going to succeed. Yeah, and as a defenseman at, at this young of age, I believe he's only twenty one years old. I mean, he's already played, besides last year, obviously hurt him missing the whole year, but he's already got these games as such a young guy, like his his development. It's even slowing down Drysdale's development more. As a defenseman, you got to be in training I camp. Know. you got to be seeing these reads. you got to be getting to work with your partner. you got to be watching the video. Like, So to me, it's like, is it really, is the juice worth the squeeze, I guess, up? Like, should these kids be sitting out? If you're Verbeek at the same time, you want to get these kids back as quick as possible. Look at what they just did in fucking Ottawa, giving that Sanderson eight years and whatever. And you yeah. can't sort out giving Jimmy Drysdale a contract right now? Yeah. What are we talking about? I know. Are they questioning who the kid is? Like, because he's a good kid. I would say I don't get why Jamie Drysdale just doesn't sign a three-year, $15 million deal. I agree. Bob's your uncle. Fair enough. I know the taxes suck out here. and You know, if you're living in CDM or Newport Beach, it's a little pricey. But come on, man. I mean, Who's you his agent? Do they have the same agent? No. I don't, I don't know. So. Zegers is Pat Brisson. I don't know if Drysdale's is. Does it say their agent? Signed by Bob Murray. Oh, it's a fucking blast from the past. It says that agent's David Gagner. David Gagner. Gagsy. Gagsy. Never, I never heard of him. But that doesn't mean he's not a good agent. Fuck. Pat Brisson. I can see why. I don't know Pat. I mean, I've met him a couple of times to you guys, but he's he's a big boy. He's one of the big dogs. So maybe he is the big dog. If you're Zegris and you hire Pat Brisson, you're hiring him to listen to him. Not that... Drysdale's not going to listen to his agent, but I think when you get one of those big boys, you got to listen to them. Like, I remember when Factor was going through his holdout in Denver, and like, you know, he had Newport Sports, and I'm like, "Fuck, buddy! Like, can we not get this figured out?" And then he goes over to Russia, and then he's like, oh, "Honestly, he's like, oh, just, I got to listen to my agent. That's why I got these guy." So I get what he's doing. You got to listen to Pat. But to me, like I said, I want to see him back. I, I I think a bridge deal is what they can figure out. You know what I mean? In a hundred in a hundred and five games, Drysdale's got seven goals. And he's got 35 assists. Not bad for, for a young kid. Three years in the league. He I missed do. the whole entire season last year. So he's got potential. There's huge upside to this kid. So just get him signed. If he wouldn't have missed that whole season last year, he probably would have got the same kind of deal. As, maybe not what Sanderson got. But he would have. if he would have played healthy last year and had another good year, he probably wouldn't be in this situation. Mm-hmm. But uh, Milk Cart, hopefully we see those boys back soon. I, I saw Zegris is skiing in Connecticut or something. I don't know where, where, where Jamie's... Skating. But get her done, boys. Want to see you guys back. Up dog, the Coyotes and Kings played down in Melbourne, Australia. You've never been to Australia. You got to get down there, buddy. It's unbelievable. To. to the fans of Australia, good on you. The barn was packed. Uh, great atmosphere. There was an unbelievable fight between Brown and this other guy from the Kings. And you know the drunken Aussies guys love that shit. So good on those boys. But get this guy a blue light. Uh, Cooley, the first rounder for the Coyotes. Um, he came down, man. Fucking flying through the neutral zone. Boom. Back in. Spinorama. Dangles the guy. Snipes it. Um, I believe went to the University of Minnesota. This is going to be his first year pro. Dude. Up dog. Get it was dancing. Light. It was sick, man. Dancing. It was sick. 
Yeah, I've never been able to use my edges like that. Uh, if I even tried that, I would have, you know, <laughs> fallen over and tried. I wasn't your shoot one from my knees. Uh, well, you're a kind of get to the back post type of guy, right? Uh, All the yeah. goal, take it wide, put you know, low and slow, put the knee down. All the goals, Prince go puts up. Yeah, your, you you put your fucking stick on the, and then you go back post, and it just finds you. Puck finds good players. Logan Cooley, what a name. Logan Cooley, man. So you got Kells, Zucker they signed, Lawson Kraus I love, Alex Kerfoot's a decent player. They brought back Bugie. Um, Barrett Hy Hyden is a kid I love. Uh, and this Logan Cooley, man. Listen, this this team, Matt Dumba on the back end, Sean Dersey was a good pickup. Besides the fact that they still got to play in the mullet, I don't know. I know our preview show is next week, but this guy, unbelievable goal, unbelievable atmosphere down there. I think that's cool that the NHL went down there up dog and um, I'm sure the boys had a good time. Yeah, as well. Listen, I just want to say this too: is the Coyotes. I, I hope they figure shit out there. It just seems like a crapshoot. One of my good buddies just stepped down as their media guy. He was a great guy, Rich Naren. I think there's a lot of when there's smoke, there's fire. I just hope they figure it out. I, I love living in Scottsdale. I think there's a lot of hockey fans there, but they got some shit going on there, man. I'm with you, man. Be fucking playing in that fucking no. Place. And I, and I love Scottsdale just as much as you do, and I think it's they can have success there. And I think if they get their rig figured out, but joke's over. Man. Jokes. Well, it's still a joke. Jokes right over. Now, but like, but cannot yeah, figure it out. This These young kids, like, they got such great and young skill there, and you know, they're not playing an NHL fucking style barn situation. It's not NHL. Hopefully, they're still flying on private planes. I think they still got the private bird. Good. Yeah. <laughs> I know. No, I, I'm with you. So, um, up dog, Kevin Hayes, our boy, I saw on, 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 uh, X and on Instagram that this year on his twig where, you know, it would say, Hayes, he's got just Broadway right down the pipe. So good for Kevin. Uh, I know Broadway will be helping him tap a few in, but I, when I saw that, man, I was just like, that's, that's what it's all about. Oh, yeah. It's pretty cool. So good on him. And then I wanted to talk to you about Mr. PTO himself, Scotty Upshaw. There's the list of guys on PTOs right now trying to make national league clubs. Is there any that jumped out to you? Jordy Ben. You got to think Jamie might be able to get him signed there. Yeah, things, but listen, I, without looking too much into this, I'm going to circle a couple that I think are going to make Nick it. Rich. All right. I'm going to say that, uh, I'm going to say Austin Watson's going to make the NHL this year. I don't know if it's going to be in Tampa, but that guy, I, I like the way that guy plays. He competes. Yeah. I think Brandon Sutter's going to make the NHL. Okay. And, uh, my boy Sam Gagne. One of those two will make it in Edmonton. The other one's going to play somewhere else. And Gagne, that, Gagne's not making it. I'm cutting Gagne off my team right you now. You are? Yeah, he's cut. I think he had a great, I think he had a pretty good year in Detroit. How many lives does he get, bro? Like, when well, he's been a pretty good player. I, I, has he? He fights. He fucking hangs out. He's a good guy. He hangs out already. You'd like him if you met him. Yeah, I played against him. I mean, let's, let's go to his hockey DB here. And then I'm pulling for Zach Cassian. He's played a thousand games. Hey, Sam Gagne. Wow. Yeah. He hit his thousandth last year. How many goals did you have in the NHL? I think I had a, did we look this up? What, I have 140? How many games did you play? 700 and something? 740. He's got 192 goals in 1,015 games. 519 points. That's probably more points than you had, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I guess. I mean, this guy just seems to like. What did he get last year in Detroit? Detroit, he had 13 goals for 18 assists. 81 points. That was two years ago. Last year, he played for the Winnipeg Jets. He had eight goals and six assists for 14 points. He had three years in Detroit. Fuck, he played in Winnie last year, huh? That's what it says. That's what it says. That's what it says. <laughs> he says so many Winnipeg Jet games I watched. Yeah, that's what it says. I, I, you know what? I didn't even I watch, I didn't even know he played in Winnipeg last year. But uh, I'm pulling for Zach Cassian. I hope yeah. he makes the team. Me too. Josh Bailey jumps out to me, and big Nick Ritchie in St. Louis. I, I listen. I've met this kid when he was the, the Ducks' first first rounder. Good kid, kind of an old school pro, but I think St. Louis could be a good fit for him. Up Doc, right? Bigger veteran team. Uh, I think Jordy Ben probably sticks it out in Dallas. Um, but I wish them all luck. Can Chase on do it again? Up Dog, can Chase on do it again? I don't know. Let me see this. Joel Kiraranta. Where did this guy? This guy play? played in Dallas last year. Buddy, he Dennis had a guy. great playoffs the couple yeah. years ago. Last year. And the year before in the yeah, bubble? Or last, in the bubble, great playoffs. I played, when I was in Dallas, my last training camp, he was young, and he kind of, he didn't quite have it all figured out at that time, but he played great. Like, he has not great 
fucking terrible stats have <laughs> he's got some bad stats how, how, i mean is how, he's finished last year how old is he he had 70 goal, 70 games eight goals one out terrible stats. no but this isn't good enough to be in the nhl full time so i get it while he's on a pto but he's he's a 1997 born he's only 23 or 24 i know actually no 31 i i don't know how when was he born oh there was fucking kids nowadays i don't know if you're born in 96 how old are you 35? 25. 96? No, you're uh, 27. 27. So 27 now in the NHL is, you're, you're getting on the verge of, you become a prospect. You go, you go. Oh, going down. You go from a prospect to a suspect real quick. When you're 27, you're like, fuck. Yeah. Can you play or not? Oh my God. Can we touch on our boy? Who? Can we talk <laughs> for the Ducks? Did I send you his photo last night? He scored a goal in preseason. Chase DeLeo. He's wearing number 69. I saw that. What a guy. Yeah. It's unbelievable. You got to appreciate that. I love Chase He DeLeo. doesn't give a flying fuck if he's wearing 69 at camp. You know he asked for it. I think he did because I saw. I noticed something on Mr. Curfew that he sent. It say he sent it to Princey like, to pump it out there. So I'm sure he did. It takes balls to wear number 69 when you've been a career minor leaguer in an NHL training camp. No. It doesn't take as much balls as it took Zenikov to wear number 66. <laughs> <laughs> Zenikov can wear it. He didn't want to, though. No. Oh, man. Who did that to him? Bob he comes he's like, did Bob Murray do that to him? No. Who fucking kidding me? I got to wear fucking 66. <laughs> Have you seen me fucking play the game? It's fucking joke. <laughs> <laughs> Chase DeLeo. I mean, if anyone, that guy. I mean, he... Chicks love Great him. Great goal last night, too. Did he score or get an apple? I, I thought he scored. I thought he just got an apple, but I, I'm not watching preseason hockey. I draw the fucking line there. Yeah. As much as I love Chase, he should be playing in Switzerland, like in Zurich or something, right? Or wearing 69 on his NHL jersey. That thing's <laughs> legendary. Yeah, I, I hope he makes the team. But like you said, once you're labeled as a minor leaguer, it's like it's kind of hard to bounce back from. I know, it's true. But you never know. Well, we'll see. But I did notice that, and that is an all-time beauty move where the old 69, just like that movie The Goon, What's his name? Clat. You were 69 in that movie. Great movie. Great flick. Have you guys ever seen Goon? Yeah. 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 I got two rules. <laughs> Do you have any Percocets? Don't you touch my Percocets. <laughs> Don't touch my Percocets. Up dog wild. Last thing here, a couple jerseys by the Boston Bruins. 100th anniversary. Wow. Uh, the jersey looked pretty sick. I wanted to give some love to the the, the Minnesota Wild. Yeah. Went back to the North Stars hybrid jersey. Those are nasty. Uh, and what are your thoughts on the Heritage Classic, Calgary Flames, Edmonton Oilers jerseys? Tough pants. Yeah. Tough pants. Even McDavid can't make those pants I look know. like they're fast or they just look old school. But I guess that's the point. They're right? supposed to be heritage. Like heritage. Vintage. Vintage. October 29th. Are we going? I don't know. Let's look. I don't think we're I'd love going. to go see Brento and his kids and, you know, I we'll mean, stop in Edmonton. If I can go see, if we're, if we're going to party with Brento, that might. It be. might be fucking cold out there. October 29th. That's Halloween weekend. When is Halloween fall on this August, year? Tuesday. A Tuesday. Yeah, so that's the weekend. So you got to be back Tuesday just to go trick-or-treat with Beckham. And when do you, what's, what's Beckham going to dress up as? Pilot? We uh, started looking the other day, actually. What's, we got what, a nice... Uh, I don't know if I want to spill the beans. No, I don't have to spill the beans. These are just, it's, uh, it's a movie that we watched. Uh, there you go. We brought Izzy to a movie on her birthday, and we're going to try to reenact uh, you know, a little Pixar family movie thing. Nice. Nice. I thought maybe he's gonna be a pilot. I thought he liked pilots, so maybe yeah. Maybe not. I just like pilots. Yeah, me and me and him, he's top gun. He'll be top gun soon enough. Yeah, he's Maverick your goose, eh? Totally. He's my, <laughs> what, my wingman. Once he gets to be eighteen, you can go out for Halloween with him, eh? <laughs> hey, Brack him up coming with you, buddy. But uh uh up dog, always a pleasure, my man. Like I said, folks, listen, next week we're gonna do our preview show. Uh we're looking for a few more curfew calls. If you got some uh questions, predictions, bets that you want to fire on DraftKings, let me and the up dog know. Max, Alex, good job today, buddy. Way to jump in there, feel part of the squad. I love that. Updog, your hair looks great. Let's go have some lunch, buddy. Let's go, baby.